G'day YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear Shed. Well we didn't know if we are going to do a stew this week or not as we um, we went away from a mate's wedding and had to be best man and stand up there and have a bit of a chat and um, <laughs> they, they were aching us on to tell a few stories of our youth and um, <laughs> I couldn't see any sense in that. Um, well we didn't want to encourage them young buggers to do what we did. We um, we got a bit lucky and got away with it, and um, we live to tell the tale where some of the young ones may not. But um, although we went away, um, the weather has been beautiful. Wind is hitting Bundaberg at the moment, and um, with winter, um, I looked before our temperatures have dropped to 24 and 9 in the morning. Um, so nine's pretty cold for us. So we we sook about it a bit, you know. Um, but look, it's not too bad. <laughs> no ice or anything like that. But um, we certainly are noticing it. And um, in my little home shop here that I've been playing in today, um, look, it's been lovely. Bit of a sour wester coming through, but I can shut the door and put the heater on a little bit and, and that sorts it all out. So, so um, look, that's a good thing. The, um, the young bloke, it, it's Monday, and I have, I have Mondays off as usual. and and um, I usually have the young fella coming in and um, you know, the young fella to help me paint the tractor. And last week he didn't come, up, come in because he felt a sore throat coming on. And um, this week he's not coming in because he's got a sore tooth. So, not to worry, look, it gave me a bit of time to, um, to do a bit of machining on a butterfly shaft. Um, in the past at some time there's, there's been a um, a choke shaft bucket up in a carbine to keep a bloke going I actually gave him mine and um, I pulled it out of a brand new carbine I had tucked away for my tractor and um, I said oh well that'll, that'll make me get my finger out and make one won't it <laughs> so this morning I had a because I didn't have the young bloke here I thought oh I'd, well, I had a look at doing a bit more tidying up the shed here and you know getting a bit more in the drawers and getting a bit more stock from up the back up to the front here and I thought, I'll oh, bugger that. <laughs> I didn't feel like doing it. But I did feel like having a bit of a machine. So, so look, it was a great little job. I, I got it all worked out. Um, just using the DRA. So I made one this morning and, and I did need a spare. So I've only just finished filming um, making the second one. And I thought it would be a good add on to the end of a stew. Um, nice little machining job. Um, it's the first job machining in my new little shipping container workshop up here and um, I feel I need to do something with the light up that end. When you're working there and you're doing the job yourself it's pretty good. You don't, um, you don't feel like you're working in the dark. I, I've always had a little torch to, um, you know, just to check when things are touching or and things like that. But, um, but yeah, it's... Uh, on the film, I think the film's a little bit dark, but look, let me know what you think. Um, I, I think it can do with a bit more light up the end there, so um, mainly just shooting across in um, onto the job for filming. Um, everything else, you have plenty of light to work with and all that sort of thing, so so look, it's it's coming up nice, but yeah, I made a couple of them. It's taken me all day buggering up that. By the time I found a shaft and did the measurements and, and um, I, I did a I did a pad drawing with green pen. I don't know why green pen. I found a green pen, and um, so yeah, it's it's been nice. Um, after going away to a mate's wedding over the weekend, uh, we went down and stayed at Montville, and um, we had breakfast. Uh, there's a beaut restaurant there called The Edge, and um, you can have breakfast there and, and lunch. It, it opens from eight thirty in the morning and closes four pm or four thirty might be. In the afternoon and you sit right on the edge of the mountain and you look over and and she'd be 30 40 foot to the ground and then it just drops away so um, it's a great place uh, the first day we went there um, we wanted to go for a bit of a drive around and have a snoop about um, I, I did my trade as a mechanic motor mechanic it was back then but even though we did tractors I did my trade in a little workshop in Yandina on the Sunshine Coast called Norm Siegel's farm machinery and um, old Norm was a Jew, and he um, he kept the Jewish Sabbath, which was sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. 
and um, in winter or a Friday afternoon, he'd be kicking us out. Come on, you get out of here, you lot. <laughs> we thought it was all right because we'd get the boot about quarter to five. We'd we'd get out a bit early. So um, so while we were down there, I took the time to go for a drive, had a look at Yandina and where Mum and Dad um, had a place where I sort of grew up and went to Wapper Falls and places like that. And I thought, oh, I'll, I'll go down Maroochydore and have a look. I haven't been there for a long time. Well. God, the bloody traffic's just unreal, so no no need to go back there in a hurry. <laughs> but um, oh, we sat at Kings Beach, Caloundra, and, um, and had a cuppa there, and, and what was interesting was a, um, the ship come in, a container ship come right in close to the shore, then she hangs a left and goes outside Bribey Island and, and heads down into the port of Brisbane. And um, of course, I didn't take me good camera for any of that stuff. Jude had her camera with her phone with her, and um, I was having a break, so <laughs> I had the phone hooked up to the car. Yeah, the new cars, they've got this um, um, Apple Play and um, Android Drive or something or other. So um, my Samsung and Android, so I, I just left the bloody thing plugged in and it gave us the maps and, yeah, had the phone working if I needed it and all that. So that wasn't bad. And, um, yeah, called back into Lansborough at the bakery there. Lansborough's got a ripper bakery opposite the, um, no, opposite the railway station. And, um, but anyway, we poked up the range and ate a few things we shouldn't have eaten. <laughs> it was bloody good fun too. And, um, but last week I did a weigh-in on Tuesday. I, I have another one to do tomorrow. And um, I was down to 121.6 kilos. So I'd lost 1.7 the week up to there. So... Um, whether I've lost weight over the weekend, I don't know. Um, probably doubt it. <laughs> um, the um, oh, I had a sausage roll and um, and yeah, just let me hair down. Had a few nice things and um, we went to Melania's little cheese shop and yeah, bought a few cheeses and went back and had a bit of cheese and a few garlic and onion ol olives and things like that. And, and so the bloody dog barks. They start playing. And um, that's the problem I got up here that I didn't seem to have down the back. But um, I'll have to have a little word to him. <laughs> Kick up the ass, I think. Anyway, um, so, yeah, look, it was great. The wedding was great. Um, it was only a, a small thing, um, 40 people, but it was great. At the, um, I knew a lot of the people there, as they were friends of my mates, and um, a lot of these family and all that. But by the night was over, I, I reckon I knew everyone. And um, had a good chat and muck around and um, drank lots of red wine. And that was good. Started off on Coronas and finished up on red wine. And that was good. But um, but yeah, we got up yesterday morning, Sunday, and, and headed back home. And went the long way through Conondale and Kenilworth and Imbolc and Kandanga, Amamore. There wasn't a little town we didn't call in to have a bit of a look and see. Um, but yeah, it was a great, great weekend. So... Um, not a lot in the stew. Um, there is a bit of bit of machining which you like. Um, yeah, so I'll I'll kick over now with the machine and don't send me safety messages. <laughs> I don't give a toss about them. The um, a couple of times I, I should have where I had boards. I had boards sitting over the mill to help keep it clean and and um, yeah, instead of putting um, putting clamps and all that, I just held onto it with my finger and plunged the saw in and all that. It's not best practice, but I'm not here to teach you how to machine. I'm just showing you what goes on in Bundy Bear Shed, so it's warts and all. But, um, but look, the carby shafts have turned out great. Um, yeah, so I wasn't going to give you a stew this week, was I? But anyway, this is a bonus stew. <laughs> so, how lucky are you? But um, it was great to catch up with a heap of people, so I'm very relaxed at the moment. So I'll get into work tomorrow and um, see if I can stay relaxed. <laughs> But that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll put the machining video on at the end of the stew here for you. Just and look, it's not big. It's just making this little shaft, and and um, I I put a couple of photos of the first finished product up on um, the Facebook page, YouTube Machinist. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll tuck the spare one of these away. You can't buy them anymore. It's off a of 1948 Ferguson T20, and it's a Zenith. Um, Zenith Carby uh, it's a Zenith 24T and it was used in the TE20s right from uh, the petrol or the petrol Kero um, 
Look, right from about 1948, 49, all the way up through to about the end of the run anyway. Um, they started using the 28G carby after after this one, then up into the 35. So, so yeah, once again, have a good week, everyone. This is a bonus stew. I'll catch you later, eh? Well, here we have a, a choke shaft, and it's off a Zenith 24T carburetor. And look, the Zenith 24T, it was used on Villiers engines, um, Ferguson tractors, early Massey Ferguson petrol and petrol Kero or TVO tractors. And it appears, I've got a carby to do up for a fella, and it appears someone's tried to drill a, a broken screw or something out of here to get the butterfly out, and it's gone. I'll try and keep it in focus, it's gone poorly. So, I actually did the carby up for him and I had a brand new carby that I'd been given um, by Sparex and they have a be beautiful carby. But um, well, to get this gent going, I actually robbed the shaft out of the brand new carb just to keep him going. But I do need to replace it. So, what I've done earlier today I've actually machined up a new butterfly shaft. Um, the, the process was, I actually run the thread, this is quarter inch brass bar. I run a quarter 28 thread up there. Um, then I milled the two flats. I'm not going to show you that this time. But what we might do, we might go over to the milling machine and all these holes here, I all, I set, I centre the shaft and I work off this front edge. And the reason I work off this front edge here is if, if I come up here 22.5 millimetres, which is how far we have to go, and there's a bit of an error there, then I come up another 15 millimetres, well, the error can just keep duplicating and at the end we can be you know, a mile away. So this hole here, I index off this mark here, of this shoulder in the shaft there. You can just see a, a little shoulder. Um, so this one here, then I come up to 35 and a half, and then I come up, I think it's 65, something like that, I can't remember, but um, once I've got the holes drilled through, then I come back, and on the top hole here, on the, on the top of the shaft, you can see there's a hole through the centre there. So I bore a 1 8 clearance. It's an 8 hole which is clearance for a 3 millimetre screw. The threads in the back here are 3 by 0.5 pitch thread. Metric thread there, imperial thread here, which is it's how it was. I'm copying it as, as close as I possibly can. So once we drill and tap, I drill, put a clearance hole in, tap it. I then come through with the mill and give ourselves a bit of clearance here or a, a little flat for the cheese head screw to settle into so that the you haven't got a screw trying to sit on top of a, um, a round shoulder. These screws I'm using a bit tight or a bit long but I can either cut them off but I do have the right ones on their way. Yeah, having a flat there, it gives the screw something to bite down onto nicely. So, once we've done the threads, um, you can actually hear the, hear the air conditioner starting to wind up. <laughs> the, um, once we do the threads, and we're happy with that, then we come in with the slitting saw, and we put the slit in, and the slit, we come halfway between these two holes so once again we come back from here I think it's 30 millimeters from this shoulder here we come in then we just plunge the slitting saw through and take him over to the lathe part him off so I've I've actually used a, a piece that would make three so I could actually spin it around and hold it so so look, enough talk let's go over we'll sit it up in the milling machine and we'll spend the afternoon just knocking another one out I this is for the carby that I that I stole the one out of, that I bought, took it out so I can replace it. Um, I have another carby with a damaged one, and 
well actually may even make a spear but for this afternoon we'll just work on just doing the one right well I've got the I've got the shaft set up here and I've just got it in a in a 5c collet block the shaft is quarter inch and I've already put the thread on and put the flats on the thread so I have it supported there with a little machinist jack just on the one end there so so the, all the process is from here as we're dropping down and with my little edge edge finder here this is my favorite one someone was up me one day they said oh you've got to spin that well you just don't the light comes on just as it comes on, zero the axis. I'll take it up. We'll just come back until we just touch again. So on the DRO we'll just go half the Y, which will that will actually give us a zero point. So if we wind to our zero point, this little shoulder, the the shoulder on the bolt here, that's what we're going to work off. So I'll try and stay out of your way if I can. So we're in the centre, now we've gone past the shoulder, so now we just, I'll tighten up my dovetail on the main beam, I'll bring it down till it touches, now I'll take it up till it just doesn't touch, and then I move the axis X across, there we go. Take him back, repeat it. Right, so if I go up there where we are, and the tip here is two hundred thousandths of an inch thick. So if we zero out our X axis, we come, excuse my arm, 100 there, 80, 90, there we are. So now we know the centre of the quill is at the centre of the shaft as the Y and the centre is straight above that shoulder. So, so now to drill the holes for the threads, if we put this little fella in here, oh, I'm going to have to put my collar in there. My chuck's just a bit big. I'll come back, I'll change the collet out, I'll change the chuck out, I'm sorry, and I'll come back. Right, we're back with the other chuck. <laughs> Worst part about having big chucks sometimes is I have one that doesn't come down small and I have one that goes down very small. So, so now we have a fair idea where we are. We know that we have the shoulder lined up and this here lined up. Well, the first hole is 22.5 along, so excuse my arm again, I have to have to I 
I need a bit better light in this new little shop for this angle coming up. So, so we take the DRO to 22.4. Five twenty two point five. I'll just lock the bead with one screw there just to make sure it's where I'd like it to be. You'll notice I'm just going steady at the start. That just changes saving drills out and changing them out and things like that. If you just go steady, you will get the centre. Okay, the next one, I'll just check the measurements once more. We have 22.5. Also a bit of dirty my caliper, it doesn't want a zero in there. find a set of calipers that are work, going to work. These ones, these electronic ones, I'm like Mr. Pete, you need to chuck the electronic ones away, I reckon. <laughs> I'll give it a clean and see if it comes better. Okay, we're looking good. So 22.5 was the first hole, second hole was 37.5, so we'll just take the DRO up, we'll loosen the bed off. Whoop, too far, B. Ready? Seven point five, and look, I just, I just like to do this. <laughs> just line everything up. Make sure it just looks okay.
tell. <coughs> Pardon me, frog in my throat. The next hole is 70.5 mil. So we'll. We're still coming from this main shoulder. Where are we? 70.1, 2, 3, 4. going to clear. We're just not quite, I believe. I've got a little torch here that I have to... <laughs> oh, bloody flashing. Who buy a torch? Don't buy one that flashes all the time. got that last hole in by the skin of our teeth, I tell you. Now this next hole, it's just the clearance hole that gives us clearance for a three millimetre thread. And this is actually a one eighth drill. We're mixing and matching a bit. But that's okay. We're going to take it down until we touch. Um, it's a quarter inch shaft, so we're going to go down approximately three millimetres. original 22.5 mark. We put the clearance in for there. Once again, around three mark.
we'll just run across the top with a little mill. On the same same settings, using the DRO, we can just come across. And um, yeah, look, we only went down about a millimetre with that before. So I'll load that up and we'll come. Right, so we have the a little five mil in mil sitting in there and we're just gonna we're just looking to make a small flat this little flat you can see here you could if I kept it focused so end mill in a chuck's not ideal but look that's okay for what we're doing <laughs> cutting forces so we're done with it. So we have the two flats. So now it's time to put the slitting saw in and we'll just we'll go with that. We'll get rid of the chuck, we'll come. We'll try and zoom you in as much as we can. Okay, we've got the slitting saw set up. Now we're going 30 millimetres from the shoulder up and we're making this cut in the in the butterfly shaft so I put my finger there again and it seems to take the vibration out and helps it good I should do it better but anyway
come through eight and a half millimeters from the back so we just need to make sure our DRO is zero and we actually come in from this side now at the 30 millimeters still and that gives us a radius each side So we drop this file back down to zero to where it was. I do need better light. I'll have that done by the next video, I believe. Till he just touches and away we go again. shaft very close to done. We'll grab him out of the vise. Looking good. I might just grab this in a collet, chuck in the lathe and just give it a quick polish I think. Well there we go. There's the second one. Now all I've just done, I actually I actually had the record button back the front. I thought I was recording, talking away to you, having a lovely time, but nothing was happening except a dog barking in the background. So, so look, all, all I did while the camera, well, I thought I was recording and it wasn't, is um, the three by zero point five metric thread. I tapped those fellas in, and they they go in nicely. The butterfly slides in and the butterfly should be a loose fit like that you think oh that's a bit sloppy but when you sit the shaft in it actually lets you centralize the butterfly and you'll notice that the size of the holes in the butterfly versus the size of the screws they give you quite a bit to play with so um, that's part of the design of it so you can centralize everything nicely so we put that fella in. Pop the screws in here. That's a nice little Monday machining job. Monday's a day off for me, so it's a great little machining job sitting in the shed fiddle. There you go, job done.